In this video, we're going to go over six GED science questions. Now, for the first one, you may be given a chemical reaction like this, but they'll always tell you what everything is. So the first thing is magnesium right there, and then it combines to form oxygen. That's the second thing. And finally, it becomes magnesium oxide at the end. Okay, and let's go ahead and read the answers now, because one unit of magnesium but magnesium, the number of units, is in front. And that one's got two, so it's definitely not A there. Let's actually go ahead and highlight all the other units. If it doesn't have anything in front, like for oxygen, it's just a one, so that's one unit of oxygen. And then two units, magnesium oxide. But we know it's not A, let's get rid of that. B says two units of oxygen, but it's really one unit, so that one's no good. And then C, again, two units magnesium. Well, that actually works, but then one unit magnesium oxide, but that's no good. So finally, it's gotta be D, because one unit of oxygen, that checks out, and that forms two units magnesium oxide, so we're all good there. In order to find a probability, you could always set up a fraction. Whatever you're interested in or counting goes up top, divided by the total. Now, in this experiment, we have 3,800 birds. What's the probability of a bird being killed by a cat? Well, the ones that we're interested in or counting are the 550 that were killed by cats, so we'll put those up top. And then, just divided by the total, 3,800. Now, technically, this is a probability, so you could just leave it like that but we'll plug it into the calculator, turn it into a percent. And by the way, this is the calculator that you'll use for the GED. So there's the fraction button, and then we'll go ahead and do our 550 divided by 3,800. Okay, enter. And then use the button above enter, convert it to a decimal. Because now this is the same thing as 14%. So that's the probability that a bird was killed by a cat. And this is based on real data in the US. So this is a public service announcement on behalf of birds. Keep your cats in check. In order to find the mean, or in this case, the mean speed, you'll always just wanna grab all of the data, and then you're gonna add them all up and divide by how many you have. It's the same thing as finding the average. Now I've already added them all up, so let's just go ahead and type that. 11844 is what I got. And then we've got four things, divide by four. 2961, so that's the average or the mean there. Now another question they could ask is what is the median? And that's the middle number. But if you have four of them, just cross off the smallest, the biggest, and if there's two numbers in the middle, you're gonna add these together, divide by two, and that's gonna give you the median and that would be 2963.5, or just rounding it to that. So usually the mean and the median are pretty close to each other. You could be given an equation like this. So in this case, we wanna find what is the difference in kinetic energy between two bowls. We have a three kilogram mass bowling ball, but that's the mass, so we're just gonna change M right there to three and then it's bowled with a velocity of six, so we're gonna change V to six. Let's go ahead and type that in. Let's see what that gets us. So we got our fraction, one half, times the mass, three, times the velocity, six, but this one's squared, so you're gonna use that X squared button right there, 54. That's the kinetic energy for the first bowl. Now for the second bowl, we're still using the same ball, and then we're gonna increase the speed to eight right there. Instead of typing the whole thing, you could just go up, highlight it, enter, and then just change this guy to an eight there. So the second bowl, we had a kinetic energy of 96. And then finally, we're finding the difference. We're just gonna subtract these two. So let's do 96 minus 54. 42 is the difference. That is our final answer here. In order to find the independent and dependent variable when you're given a graph, you could always turn these into letters. The bottom, you could turn this one into an I, 
And that's always where the independent variable goes. And then the other one, you could turn it into a D, and that one is the dependent variable. So in this case, the number of minutes that you worked out is the independent variable, and your heart rate, or beats per minute, the dependent variable. So B's got the correct answer there. The reason that works there is the independent variable is the one that you control, and you control how long you work out. But the dependent variable, your beats per minute, or your heart rate, that is the one that depends on the other one. And that's true, because that depends on how many minutes you worked out there. Okay, and one last one. Now, with a genetics problem, you're always going to be given the two parents, and then you're going to draw a square. You're just going to split up one of the parents across the top, and the other parent along the side. And you're going to combine them to see what each of their four kids would look like. So, in this box, we've got big B, big B. Let's go ahead and add those in. In this one, we've got a big B and a little b, add that. And then just keep going, and those are all four. Now, anytime that you have a capital letter, it's going to have that trait. So these three kids are all going to have brown eyes there. But when you have the little letter, and you have two of them, then it's going to have that trait. So only one of the kids has blue eyes. And finally, we're finding what is the chance that they have a child with blue eyes. Well, just one out of four, so that's it there. So I hope these are helpful for you. Let me know what questions you run into. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.